Hello and welcome to an episode of Monday Markets. As always, we're brought to you by Woo. Links available in the description below. Apologies, missing casual Friday. I was unwell again. I'm slightly better. Hopefully it sticks this time, but we will see. As far as BTC goes, volatility has really kind of fallen off a cliff recently. It seems like we have this tug of war narratively between Grayscale is going to sell us to zero. And then once Grayscale is done selling, we're going to go to infinity because of all these new inflows. And it seems kind of neither here nor there at the moment. Grayscale has slowed very considerably, uh, but so have the ETF volumes and inflows as a whole. So the market's just been chopping in the meantime. Uh, realistically, there, there are only two things I care about and one of them more than the other. Uh, the first thing is on the monthly time frame. It's still within the larger sort of 60 to 35k consolidation as far as finding levels and then the mid-range at 44 to 47 we've been talking about this for months at this stage uh the monthly close was below resistance so if you were looking for a more systematic entry trigger that range mid-range range mid-range range, range midpoint mid reclaim into range high that was not offered by the monthly close the monthly close is at resistance uh realistically the next signals on the monthly would either be a dip into monthly support which is 35 to 37 um, or a break of the monthly mid-range, so 47 plus towards the range high. Uh, but those signals don't look likely to trigger in the next, well, for the next month at least. Um, but And it's quite far away from the higher time frame levels to do business. Realistically, I don't like breakout trading on the monthly. I think the monthly time frame works best when you're buying dips into monthly support or even buying below monthly support, anticipating for it to be a monthly wick. Uh, the last setup that I wrote about and spoke about was this one on the monthly, uh, the retest of this cluster. And since then, it hasn't really offered any amazing monthly pullback opportunities. Uh, so if this gives us one into 37, 35 ish and comes to the range low, I think that's a really interesting area to do business. Probably one of the few where you have to think, OK, it's time to put up or shut up. You, you know, if you were waiting or very passive during the course of the rally, uh, that is really the pullback from the monthly perspective that matters. Uh, everything else is just a bit noisier. We could get into a discussion of a range between 35K and 47K and the Im implications of that. But realistically, that is better done and better serviced by lower time frames. And also, I think some time frames just have clearer uses than others. I think for the monthly, the generally best use for it is monthly levels, but also dips into monthly support. So unless it's one of those, and ideally the latter, then it's not super, super interesting. So monthly rejected at resistance, released and close above it. So no breakout trade above it, even though that's a dodgy trade in itself for this time frame. Otherwise, realistically, if you're going to be getting most of your guidance from the monthly, it would have to be at support at 37.35. If it gets there, that's good. That's a, probably the only area that really matters. Uh, if it doesn't get there and it just chops in between, then I guess the monthly uh, will have to stay on the periphery as far as priorities go. Um, the weekly time frame is really the most interesting one because I think that's what's going to generate the next sort of systematic signal, if you will. Shockingly, eight weeks later, we're still in a very narrow ETF range. This is what I was tweeting about earlier today. Uh, from candle body to candle body, there's like 6% here for, for a period of eight weeks. That's really impressively low as far as the and narrow as far as the range goes and volatility in general. As mentioned before, we've already had attempts on both sides to break out above and below this consolidation, but both attempts have failed on a closing basis. Uh, the good news is that once you've had failed breaks, especially on both sides, the probability that the next close and the next break attempt is real, I think is increased on average. So if you get a weekly close above or a weekly close below, that signal is less likely to be a fake out and more likely to be uh, the real thing. Now, that, of course, raises another interesting question, which is if we get to the weekly breakout, breakout, breakout or breakdown signal, uh, where are the next levels? I think there are a few and they tend to overlap with monthlies. So the earliest weekly that I think makes sense is around 36K, which is conveniently in the middle of this kind of dodgy diagonal consolidation that we had. Uh, so I think there's some confluence there. We also know there's a monthly at 37. So that's also worth paying attention to. And the weekly extreme is closer to 32K, which is this lowest close, old, old range low, uh, some resistance, then that was the breakout trigger for more continuation. So as far as if this weekly range expands, 
I expe expect the expansion to take a few weeks and for it to be a fairly sizable move. Obviously, it could do a second instance of break above doesn't go anywhere, break below doesn't go anywhere. I'd be surprised. We've spent eight weeks here and we've already faked out twice. So another fake signal in a range this narrow would be surprising but not impossible it's not my base case i do think the next break is going to be the real one but if it isn't then uh more chop awaits that said everything that i'm saying is on the assumption that the next break is real so i'm kind of looking where the carnage will lie or which highs it will take us to uh, as far as the supports that it might lead us to i think the earliest reasonable one is 36k and the more deep sort of discounted one is 32k uh, and again from like an investor point of view or someone much higher time frame position trading uh, th there isn't a super meaningful difference between 32 and 36 especially given that those types of tr investment styles don't typically just fire off the entire clip in one go uh, and so you could either average or just look to do business at the extreme or whatever else obviously trading is a bit different uh, you want specific setups at the specific boundaries uh, and ideally looking more towards extremes more often than not uh, but for, for the purposes of this show which is kind of a hybrid trading and higher time frame type of thing uh, uh, the basic premise is that if this consolidation breaks down 36 32 and everything anything below that just looks uh, very dodgy um, same to the upside if it breaks out I expect a similarly large move just given how much this is coiling at this point and the amount of time spent in this range generally speaking longer consolidations precede larger moves and so the first slash early port of call that would be reasonable i think is somewhere around 50k 51 52k uh, that that may seem extreme relative to current pricing uh, but we've already traded not too far from there around the etf announcement ish itself so it's not completely out of view and again if we take it just from the range high the breakout after an eight week consolidation to that level that's you know under 20 percent, not manically high um especially considering the preceding trend. Uh, the other level is a fairly self-explanatory all-time high type of thing. I'd, I'd be surprised to see the market here, uh, at least in the first half of this year. Uh, but, you know, just for the sake of consistency, we're looking at the early levels below us and then something deeper. I think it makes sense on the upside to look in a similar fashion where we look at something early and then something uh, if the market really accelerates. So this is essentially what my important decision if you will weekly chart looks like this range wholly uninterested i'm interested in two things one is the systematic signal generated by a weekly close above or below and two the implications of that as far as where which supports can i reasonably expect of a break of this size and which resistance can i reasonably expect uh for a break of this size and for me the corresponding levels to those are 50 60 basically and 36 32 uh hope that makes sense i don't want to dress this up too much because really the market hasn't done much since etf uh the daily chart makes it look more complicated than it is but these are just wicks on the higher time frame and on a closing basis we've not closed outside of the etf range for the past eight weeks so i don't want to make it sound like there's more going on than there is in reality hopefully that's helpful um ebtc still a bit of an identity crisis i i i've seen some commentators outline this is a level of support at around 053. It could well be. Uh, it's not my favorite level. I still think, given the duration and magnitude of this downtrend, uh, at this point, especially given the fake out reclaim that we had on this ETF announcement candle, uh, it's worth waiting for something more material and significant, like a break in market structure. To me, that would be at least above 062, which I think Don came up with initially and makes a lot of sense. It's also a nice level uh, in its own right, if you look slightly to the left. So there is some confluence there and so breaking above that would then validate the range reclaim argument give you a market structure break relative to the local high uh, and this level here as well you, you, at this, I, don't, I don't again i don't mean to make it sound too complicated basically you've had a long downtrend and you've had a fake out reclaim in that downtrend as well uh, all of that is a sign of weakness and or chop so if you're looking for clarity to trade this counter trend i think raising the bar for what qualifies as good evidence is a reasonable way of looking at it and i think that's what makes sense for eth btc uh eth usd still unpleasant as ever uh from a trading point of view i don't know if on monday markets or whichever show uh talked about this range high level here at 2350 2380 uh that seems to still be providing resistance and that has also caused uh a similar narrow range between uh, the weekly range low which is around 2100 and the daily range high around 23 2400 there's really not a lot of space here um you know eight percent from extreme to extreme and it's not even trading both extremes so really low volatility regime um 
granted the levels are at least somewhat clear because we they haven't been violated recently on the weekly time frame right no weekly we've already had the one failed break here on the weekly but resistance more recently and then no failed break to the downside on 2200 so however you slice it did it on the daily did it on the weekly uh we just have really slow high time frame very narrow ranges in the majors 2200 to 2300 i mean very tight on eth and btc is similar you know for the last eight weeks kind of a six percent range between 41.4 and 43.8 there's really not much going on here uh altcoins i mean volatility is slow as a whole um for the market there's still some sort of weird altcoin action here and there it's not really in the majors uh it's ecosystem specific more often than not and uh, outside of some majors outperforming a lot of it is on chain lower cap type of stuff i think solana is still interesting uh, i think we discussed what a momentum continuation breakout would look like where it kind of breaks the diagonal and doesn't look back uh this thing instead slowed down a little bit at the range high that was the first trouble area that we talked about on monday markets and so again a very slow market even in the bursts about performance uh, kind of gets rejected by the first trouble area and slows down since then i still think this is a good breakout level to watch in general if you're interested in high cap altcoins uh solana above 102 would be a good sign of, of continuation in general otherwise uh link has also been strong that's that that's an actual breakout um, I haven't been looking at this on the weekly as much as the daily, paying attention to this consolidation. Um, this is one of those breakout is bullish until proven otherwise. So anything back below 16 is troublesome. Uh, if it stays, then that's good to go in general. Um, it's starting to push into some higher time frame levels where it might be problematic to chase the breakout, uh, specifically at 19 and a half ish on the monthly. That's also roughly where the old weekly range high is. So some resistance here, I don't think it's necessarily the best area to chase this breakout. But if you're looking for outperformers in a very slow market, then Link uh, has been one of them. If we take a look at the market as a whole, um, in terms of where the outperformers have been, and we look at large cap price changes, it's really Link and a league of its own, following that high time frame breakout from that long consolidation and everything else for the past week is completely flat if not down so this is why altcoins are in a bit of an odd slash uninteresting spot you've got one outlier which is link again and everything else is just really hasn't done anything for the last week or so uh you might have to go towards the mid caps to find some more volatility imx 13 percent, bit of an outlier and then you've got luna uh, and even at that point for a top performing mid cap to be eight percent there's not an interesting altcoin market make, you know. Uh, RNDR, all this Apple Vision stuff, 5%. And then even among the mid caps, everything else is uh, pretty sort of standard. Either way, 1% or 2% and nothing too crazy. Uh, most, of, most of them below zero, right? So negative returns on most uh, mid cap alts. So we've just seen some low volatility tends to be choppy and bleedy in the market. It's quite, it, it's much more rare that during low volatility, altcoins drift up. In general, during low volatility, people aren't just hitting every bid that they see. Uh, these things tend to drift lower, and that, that's kind of what we see in this distribution. Bear in mind, this is the mid-cap stuff. Uh, the large caps uh, look even uh, more depressing than that. Sort of link, TRX are the only ones that are more or less up. ETH, break even, everything else, uh, negative returns during the last week. So yeah, just one of those updates, isn't it? Um, chop in the majors more ranging btc same range for eight weeks eth more or less the same a couple of altcoins outperforming but they tend to stand out like a sore thumb you can use velo to isolate them and day trade them if you want uh, even the mid caps aren't sort of carrying and it's, it's just a bit flat and bleedy across the board uh, i'm not sure if there's anything super interesting coming up catalyst wise uh, we've got all sorts of halving chat and whatever else but uh, i remain uh, i don't think that's a catalyst per se i think it tends to align with broader macroeconomic stuff and liquidity cycles and crypto four-year cycles and whatever else rather than the halving in itself being a super event uh, but if that gets people trading that'll be more interesting at the very least um realistically i haven't been looking a ton at altcoins i'm more or less hyper focused on this weekly uh breakout slash breakdown signal on btc and eth and i think that's the next important one to get right 
the resolution to this eight week consolidation. Otherwise, if you're not losing, losing money and not getting chopped up, I think that's an achievement in itself. Uh, that's all from me. Uh, I'm never going to try to inundate you with, with more information I think is useful. Uh, if it's a bit boring and there are only one or two things that I care about, then I will just talk about the one or two things I care about. Hopefully that makes sense. At the very least, out of respect for your time. Hope you've all had a wonderful weekend. Uh, better than mine, at the very least. I uh, hope I'm better from now on. Casual Friday should be on this week. So again, apologies for the uh, break in the schedule. But uh, I, I just want to stop dying at this point. So hopefully, fingers crossed, see you on Friday. Thank you to Woo for supporting the show. Their links are available in the description below. Have a wonderful rest of your week. trletter.com for our newsletter tomorrow, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.